Welcome everyone to episode four of the Simpho Gear podcast, the episode where we talk about Simpho Gear, Fruits Basket, Fake Khalid, and sometimes anime. Tonight, I am joined by my favorite person in the world, Sea Tactics, who wants to uh, play guitar on top of a nuclear submarine. How are you doing tonight, Sea Tactics? I think only one one of those things is true. It is indeed the Fruits Basket, or not, uh, sorry, damn it, the Simpho Gear podcast. <laughs> So you're saying we won't talk about other random shows? I mean, there is a good possibility of that happening. Yes, but we have plenty to talk about with Simpho Gear because this uh, season seems to be cramming as much plot as they can into these episodes and not just that type of plot. So they're cramming a bunch of boobs into these episodes? That too. Wait, wait, what other... I don't know what plot means. What does plot mean? It's, it seems like you have given it two meanings. I only know it as boobs. <laughs> um, and things actually happening. Because... Boobs, boobs and abs. It, those both happened this episode. There are definitely some boobs that happened this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they were. Do you want to read the summary thing? Sifo Gear. I keep wanting to call it Fruits Basket. <laughs> Jesus. Sifo Gear Episode 4. The name of the flower is Amalgam. Just in case you didn't know that. Yeah, does that actually have anything to do with the episode? It does. Noble, okay, good, because I, I forgot that part. Noble Red is defeated by the Symphogears. Will they join forces through friendship and hand-holding? Also, the Japanese government raids Song. That's all I got. Well, th- those things definitely happen. But yeah, we start off the episode seeing a little bit about like, the motivation for the villains. And like using their powers messes with their blood, so they need these blood transfusions, and they're fighting so they can become human again, or whatever that exactly means. Yeah, uh, and it's very this whole for recently the last couple episodes they've kind of like tried to garner sympathy with these characters, though I feel they're failing at it because in this same episode you have the the, the death bat lolly girl go uh go uh i won't ask for forgiveness and then straight up slices a dude's head off so um i'm not sure what they're trying to get out here they they, they're still you know they're not they're just killing people willy-nilly still like it's really hard like maybe like vanessa but then again she shot boob rockets at hibiki (laughs) that was kind of self-defense well (laughs) I mean, they could, they, they, all of them killed lots of people, so I, I don't... It is very hard to garner sympathy for these characters, in my opinion. Yeah, well, I guess the, the people that they were killing at the start, I don't fully get, like, what they were doing. So it's like, are those people they killed also deserving of sympathy? Yeah. Are they, like, part of the evil Japanese government things? Just a bunch of random people showed up, and, and they were like... Or, like, there was a couple people, they're like, no, you have to kill them. I... Or something. Yeah, I was kind of confused exactly what was going on there is like uh fugo who is the old man was like was wanting them to activate the relic and then i don't completely understand what happened next shubash's grandpappy came in and he put the relic in the thing and then it all went boom exactly and yeah so the guy used it and apparently apparently that was a test for him to like okay it doesn't work like like that the 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 ability of the bracelet will not show itself or something i think he said something simpler and he said but no worries though i have my next move planned so apparently he's already got an idea to get whatever power it is from this bracelet yeah it was like it was, seems like the power cannot be used just by anyone yeah yeah um it has to be someone special i I'm, I'm thinking it's maybe it's subasa Oh, that could be interesting, especially since we're getting like Tsubasa maybe moving away from being just a Simpho Gear user. Yeah, it, she's she had an she's having an eternal conflict right now with herself. Uh, she even says in this episode, where is the quote? She says, "Like songs uh, can't." Like, she says, "Songs can't protect anything." Yeah, that's. Did I write that one down too? Yeah, she said that they cannot protect anything. Like she saw the failure from the concert, how to fight, despite fighting, there are like 70,000 people either killed or missing. Yeah, vast majority of the people in the arena still died, no matter what their efforts were. And to compound onto that, it ha- that was the second time it happened. 
Right. So it's like you'd think that they would be ready, they would be prepared or be strong enough. And that also ties into the fact that the villains this season are shown to be weaker than before, but because of how they're they're cunning, they're able to keep beating the Sifu users, users or at least not be defeated by them. Yeah, not they it seems um well we we saw in this episode one of them used a landmine, which I thought was that whole scene was funny when they do their transformation sequence and it starts to play the song and then it's just interrupted by the landmine. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah, it definitely shows these villains, they know they're weaker. They know they cannot win head on, so they have to come up with these different strategies and fight underhanded, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, they're kind of... It's very weird for the main villains of this show to be the underdog. Yeah, I was just going to say that too, and I like it. I I like am naturally drawn to fight to one group for the underdogs. It makes you kind of want to see how the villains will try overcoming the Sympha Gear users. Yeah, yeah, it definitely seems like they're trying to play up though. Like it's a subversion. Like, like for the past four seasons, as the Sympha Gear users and Song have you know have gotten more power and gotten and uh, acquired more people to to fight with them and and all this and that and they're at the top of their game and now they're they're being broken apart and 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 i think hibiki says um somewhere their their victory is rejection which is true they're they're tearing the inside of song apart person by person yeah, because like they went after Subasa, they did something to her. They're trying to do the same to, to Hibiki. And even when the Sympha users win the fight, the villains still get what they want. Like the last episode, they got the blood. Uh, this episode, they were able to get the relic out of there. Yeah, and it definitely seems like from from the way it's progressing, I think Subasa is going to be the to eventually become the villain. I think because the way it's turning out, it's definitely like a Darth Vader. Uh, Anakin Ooh. Skywalker kind of thing I think they're doing where... and maybe they would bring back to season one how Tsubasa and Hibiki were kind of, were antagonistic to each other yeah maybe maybe they'll they'll go back on that and like it'll be like like somehow maybe like amplifies it's like seal invasion or whatever they used uh, on Tsubasa like amplifies those negative thoughts of, of whatever Tsubasa had because it's obvious that with Tsubasa's past and her family she's got issues you know yeah That's... i mean her grandfather is the one like who's betraying them so it's like it would make sense for her to go along with that and like he wants to live up or she wants to live up to his expectations right maybe there's I... there's it's just maybe thoughts that she's harboring that are negative and and they're going to be amplified by whatever seal invasion did and because of that she's probably going to activate the bracelet's power and yeah. Yep. Well, I yeah, I can't see her like being like the the final villain because I think they like she'll come back to the good side by the end just because she's Subasa. But yeah. I could definitely see her weakness turning her into a villain for at least part of the show for a little while. Hibiki is the face of Sifogira, Subasa is the voice. Because she's always she's always the opening song and usually the ending oh. song. Yeah, um, something else about Tsubasa's song is that they released, like, the dates for the music that is coming out, and Tsubasa's is going to be one of the later songs, so I wonder what that will be. Yeah, it's probably because she's going to, her arc is going to probably play out the, the most throughout this this season. Right, along with all the other, like, 12 arcs they already have going. <laughs> This is true. There is just tons of stuff going on, and, and there's a million characters getting their own side stories in each episode. We got like Hibiki at the beginning with with Miku again, showing their exactly. relationship and and how like Hibiki wants to just have a bunch of fun and yeah, like Hibiku is saying she did, didn't want to go back to HQ, but she had to. And like, there's a reason with everything else going on, they keep having a scene like that every episode, or at least almost every episode. Yeah, it, I think they're trying to show how in in all of the Sympho Gear users' lives, there's something in it right now that's that's giving them a lot of... It's, it, they're going through hard times, each in, yeah. of them individually. Well, especially like uh, Hibiki and Tsubasa. I don't know if it's as much for the other four. Right, yeah. Because like we saw the lollies in there like having fun being kids when they weren't fighting. So I think it might be like the newer generation will be the ones to like reach back to the older generation yeah yeah um this 
it's it's all very very it's it's all coming together slowly of these 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 branching arcs and and this you know the america and japan thing and and all the the character storylines it's really it's starting to come together into something pretty cool oh i got there's uh, something that you said when we were watching it last night that kind of fits in a subasa you're seeing that subasa is vegeta now oh yeah she kind of like is doing the the whole bad cool bad guy thing right now where yeah or it's like she's desperate for power and might be willing to go through right. any length to get to get it yeah yeah because in in dragon ball z if you've never seen it vegeta for a while is is the main kind of like antagonist of the show um he's like the most consistent one for majority of of the seasons um but he's still kind of like a like a He's he's like a cool bad guy, like yeah, he's like a vi- villain who you kind of want to root for. Exactly, he's like a like a Sasuke Uchiha, but maybe not. Well, it's like, also like actually evil. With... Doesn't do evil things necessarily. Like he's yeah, a total well, like Vegeta's a total dick, really. Yeah, it's like he actually cares about some things, and there it's not quite the same. But when uh, during the Majin Buu arc, how he's like willing to get more power, even if it meant betraying the heroes for like. So some so like to be justified in the end if he got the power he needed. It would be interesting if that's where Subasa's character's head, and I, I think that would be awesome because, for one, I think that's actually the best story arc in Dragon Ball. But is his is Vegeta's whole character? It's that's his. I think that's the most compelling thing about that series, um, and it would be cool for Subasa to do it. It'd just to be like. Power is now what protects. Songs do not protect anymore. Right, and I wonder if they'll do something with Chris too, because she's the only of the original three who is not like had them trying to do the seal on her. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, so Chris they, originally was a bad guy in the show. Right, so they could definitely tap into something there. It's like the same thing. Like you need more power to do what you need to do. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, it, that just you know that made me think though like a lot of these characters like origins are in in this series are like varied like you have Chris or well first of all you have Hibiki who who is ba- like had a piece of Sinfo gear lodged into her heart after yeah, like, uh, Amachi she was died a, or whatever her name is yeah it's like she was going to a concert the noise attack killed tons of people Hibiki was one of the few survivors but only survived because of the other Sinfogi user sacrificing herself. Yeah, and then there's Chris, who... Total bad guy. Um, and and was, was, uh, was, was, I guess, uh, brainwashed by Fine. And then you have right. the Death Lollies and Maria, who... Uh, not necessarily brainwashed, but were, were doing... Were basically doing what their, their mother said. <laughs> Pretty yeah, much. so they like being controlled, and they lost a lot too in the whole thing of everything. Yeah, yeah, and and now like they went through all of that, and season four was really like establishing them like they're all a team now. And yeah, it was like they're re- like we got them being good guys in season three, but this is more like they're redeeming themselves. They're fighting for good, making up for the past. Except for the death lollies who keep doing drugs. I mean, that's not as bad as, like, murdering giant continents of people. <laughs> that is true. Or trying to bring the moon crashing into the planet Earth. Yeah, that'll probably happen later on the season, though. I mean, it would be so awesome if they brought Fine back. Fine was like, ooh, um, you thought I was dead. <laughs> that would not surprise me. I mean, they brought St. Germain back, and she sung with Hibiki, and they punched stuff. Yeah, well, the ghost of St. Germain or whatever. Exactly. I, yeah, I don't know if that completely makes sense, but it was Simple Gear and it was awesome, so I'm not going to complain. There's, a, there's another anime that does that, and it's really cheesy. I mean, it is, it is a really cheesy trope to be like, it's the ghost of your father, and he's here to, to will you on to fight. Um, well, it kind of makes sense to, since their powers were like residing within the Simple Gear, so sure, I'll say that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I mean, it, it does, yeah. They're, they're part of the Simple Gears now, and they use they kind of fuse i guess like with, with the faust robes or whatever and yeah because called he the amalgam using, yeah so they, they like use the faust robes to like protect and then convert that to pure offensive power and then he got those two giant fists yeah 
yeah. that were that were also uh, rocket propelled. <laughs> Speaking of, there's just a lot of like absurd things happening here. Yeah, I, I mean this this whole fight scene was just first. I mean, it started off with the landmine. Like, what what the hell? Where'd you get the landmine? <laughs> well, not even that, but the first fight scene too, when the Hibiki and Maria were fighting noise. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, and like one of the things is that you saw the two younger Illuminati ones. They were like, it looked like they were driving away in a car, but then panned down a bit, and you saw that the other one was carrying the car. Sifogar <laughs> <laughs> is full of this stuff. Yeah, it's, it's like a, it's like it doesn't matter for the plot. It doesn't make sense, but it's just absurd. And Austin's like, okay, yep, this is Sifogar. Yeah, and I mean, uh, Vanessa. Uh, Hibiki confronts Vanessa and is like, "Why are you doing this?" You know, she's doing her normal Hibiki thing, where she's being all nice yeah. and, and and trying to like, like you know, to reach out, be diplomatic. And Vanessa's like, "Oh well," uh, and she starts like messing with her boobs, and I'm like, "What the hell's going on?" I was <laughs> well, like, "Yeah, a little bit of a boob jiggle at first. I'm like, okay, this is anime." And then she's saying, "Yes, I want to connect with you," and then she didn't look like she started unzipping. And Hibiki's like, "I don't want to understand you in that way." <laughs> Yeah, that's literally what she said. Uh, yes. Oh wait, she said I don't want to come to un. No, she says I don't want to come to that kind of understanding. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> and she fires boob rockets at a bicky. Yeah, it's like. And she I mean... while while she's like doing that, she's also like trying to put her fingers over her eyes, but, yeah, but she's like, looking me... on in horror. Hibiki's like doing the traditional anime main character thing when a female uh, starts stripping in front of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then at the end, Vanessa launches off. She, she has rockets in her. She has foot rockets. Well, she also has like the missiles in her hands or arms or whatever. She's a cyborg, basically. Yeah, yeah. She's Android 16. I'm going to kill Goku. <laughs> or just fire boob rockets. Or just fire boob rockets. I also have those. Mine are called peck rockets. Where's Goku? <laughs> um, yes. And one of the other things that they brought up this episode was like the similarity between alchemy and music. I I did not catch on to this. Uh, yeah, let's see. Where was it? There were lots of things that happened here. Uh, yeah, it was when they were using the, uh, like, activating the relic. They're saying like music and alchemy are like these try to find truth within harmonies. So, so it's like so they're like the same type of power thing. And I think that might be something that we see more of because in the last part of the episode they battle using both the power of music and alchemy with the phosphorobes and the sympho gears. Maybe. Maybe that's like, you know, like a like a foreshadowing of them getting together. Oh, that could be. They have like these new alchemists fighting alongside the Sinfo Gear users, and they and they make and they use like like equivalent exchange, but they also like to create drums and guitars and basses, and then they just perform a concert. This sounds like Show by Rock, which is my second favorite absurd music show. You know, you know, the last episode of this, they're going to perform a concert, and it's going to go right. That would be the perfect way to end the series. Exactly. Like they have a concert and then maybe they bring back like Fine or whoever. And it's like you see the moon flying back into the sky of where it should be back in one piece after Hibiki destroys it. Yo, gotta go, gotta go. Yo, oh. Set sail for one piece. King of the pirates. I don't think that's the show that we're talking about tonight. Set. <laughs> You said One Piece. Uh, no, I didn't. I would never say uh, something like that. <laughs> oh, man. And the moon. its It was in a frame a couple times in this episode once again. They keep doing um, it. I mean, the moon's kind of normal thing to show when you're showing things, but yeah. No. No, there's a reason. <laughs> And speaking of reasons, so something that I thought was interesting, again, like we talked about how they're trapped with all the landmines, but then they were, uh, the Illuminati trapped them in a philosophical labyrinth thing yeah. that's 380,000 kilometers long. 
Yeah, it's like yeah, it's like they called it a philosophical weapon, which is something yeah. so much like you'd almost hear out of the Fate series. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say it seemed like a weapon out of Fate because it was like it was uh, from a Daedalus, who was like a Greek mythological figure who built a giant labyrinth, and so they're like using that and like all the legends around it is what gives it this power, which is like Fate. It's, and like, a, it's it. like a reality marble. Yeah, that makes sense. I was gonna say noble phantasm, but reality marble makes more sense. Well, noble phantasms can be reality marbles too. See, I told you we were gonna talk about fate. God damn it! <laughs> now we just have to talk about fruits basket. Oh sh- crap! We just did. Yes, very different shows, but they're kind of like in a few ways if you think about it. They're well on drugs. Gilgamesh. Yes, we need Gilgamesh to show up here. And Kyo. That too. And uh, yeah, so after they were trapped in the labyrinth, the Illuminati were basically making it explode in there, trying to knock out the Sifogear users. Yeah, and, a couple and they things, almost I, won. Yeah, and well, it's like they knew that it would take like multiple blasts. They weren't going to just assume that they would win in a single one. Just like showing that they know the Sifogear users are strong. They're not going to underestimate them. But then they forgot that the Sifogear users are the main characters and get powers out of nowhere. Strong and thick. That is a way to put it. In the case of Mario. <laughs> yes, Mario, who also uses shields and things that remind me of Bleach. She also, in her transformation sequence, she had her sword thing wrap around her boobs, and her boobs broke through the sword thing. Of course they did. Her boobs yeah. are powerful. Yeah, when I was rewatching, I skipped that part. What? No, you can't skip that part. That's the best part. I have to go watch the good parts. That, that's the pe- best part. Oh, and something else. Do you know who's the only person whose transformation sequence we haven't seen yet? Uh, Miku. Well, yes, but also Subasa. Whoa. See, she's going to be evil. No, Wait. she's not. Whoa, she's not going to have a transformation sequence because she rejects the, the music. Ooh, that could be. My other idea is that what if Miku is the one who gets the relic's power because... They said last season she had something like a Hibiki because they were both hit by the blast, so maybe they're the ones who can use it. Well, well right, right. Because in the last scene after the credits of season four, they were specifically talking about Hibiki, so, or, well, or Miku, rather. Yeah. So it's like if a, um, Hibiki can use a super uh, transformation thing, then it seems like Miku can as well, so. Father, son, that... Kamehameha with Miku. Oh yes, that will be what will happen. It's gonna happen. So like, yeah. Same. So like, we—that's another character arc too. We have Miku's arc, which is kind of buried with everything else. But yep, I don't know why we still have that freaking blonde lolly from season three, though. The alchemist lolly. Who cares about her? Uh, but she's one who gives them their new powers. She's probably the worst villain, actually. Think about it. She's the most forgetful. She she has two of them. She's she there's two of her. One of them right. turned into adult and touched her boob. That's about all I remember. That was season three, I think. Yeah, it was season three. It was it was, it was a fun, it was a good season, but the villain was forgettable. Yeah, that was. I think yeah, I can see the other seasons having more memorable villains, and yeah, I like the villains of this time too. Yeah, yeah, the villains in this are are much more integral to what's going on. Yeah, and they, they're they interesting, too. They're not just, like, villains for the sake of villains. But it's, like, they're interesting. They're fighting for their own things. They have their own struggles and own character arcs, too, sort of. Right. Exactly. And Earth speaking people of... Too. Yes, uh, lollies are people, too. No, 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 no. Hold on. No, I didn't say that. Because lollies aren't people. Okay, I'm, I'm telling the FBI that. But speaking of the FBI, we have the final twist episode, and that's that the government was ordering the Simpho Gear people to retreat, and they were holding up song at gunpoint, and yeah, lots of questions there about what's going on. It's going to be like an Avengers thing, where they're like yes. kicked out or whatever, and... I just need to watch the rest of this. I don't remember. It's, <laughs> no, I'm not even sure now if that's actually what happened. Uh, probably not. Uh, but it's like one of those things where it's like, you know, down on their luck, they're kicked out of, you know, their place and they go set up a new place. 
And they're yeah, like, they, save, they save the world anyway. Yeah. Uh, they like fight out of the Japanese government and with their Simfo gears. And they're like, get out of here, non Simfo gears. And Tsubasa's you know, like, no. Like she gets she gets in their way and is like, no, do not, do not disobey them. Don't ooh, you guys yeah. fight for justice? And then she doesn't do a transformation sequence, but she's still ultra powerful because she's you know she's slicing candles now. And the other question is like, will the commander actually fight? Because I still want him to. Yes, yes, he should fight Subasa, and Subasa should destroy him. <laughs> That would be an interesting battle. It's like Subas is like betraying them. Like, decide, so okay, I'm gonna fight you because the Hibiki is away punching the moon. Oh yeah, right. No, no, that is actually perfect because yeah, yeah, like, he trained. He helped train, you know, the Simfo Gear users. And yeah, Subasa, and, sure that and he can fight. Yeah, very good. And you could be like, yo, I trained you. You want to go toe to toe? We go toe to toe, and they go toe to toe, and it's like kind of. It's not very close. It's it's obvious he's putting up a really good fight, but Subas is just overpowering him and slices his head off. There you go. I don't want him to die. He's too awesome. Well, not literally slices his head off. Just figuratively slices his head off. <laughs> okay, I'll take that one. And then that's how you set up Subas as the big bad. And then Subas takes over the world, and then we get a surprise season six. That yes. During next season. Season six. Yes. Oh my god, that'd be great. They're like, this is the final season, everybody. We're not doing any more of them. And then at the end, it this ends on the cliffhanger of Sabasa going evil, and it's like season six. And then right after that, King's Game season two. No, what happens is at the end of the final episodes, they say to be continued, and then it's like, and then like right after they start playing season six. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, it's like to be continued after this commercial break. <laughs> that would be great. Oh my god, that yeah. Yes, we need it. Season six. Yes. When is it going to happen? Know. It won't happen. It makes no sense, but that's why it can happen. But it should, because I like Simfo Gear. <laughs> exactly. We need more Simfo Gear in, in our lives. Six seasons in a movie. Ooh, movie would be fun. They should definitely do a Simfo Gear movie. That would actually be awesome. Yeah, especially like how good it looks normally. So if they have the time to trade on the movie and the music and being in a theater to experience it all oh man i i go to a theater to watch sinfo gear the movie i go to the theater to watch normal sinfo gear this is also true but i'd be looked at very weirdly <laughs> like what are you watching um a bunch of teenage girls dressing in really tight spandex and fighting Pun other and punching the moon other teenagers dressed in tight spandex and with occasional animal things. Oh, something I noticed is that uh, the cat Lolly had like an extra tail in her suitcase. No, oh, yes, yes, that is how she uses the 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 power up thingy where she yeah, because like Hibiki like Hibiki's fist like grabbed her tail and started to drag so it, and then took another tail out of her suitcase to like put it back. Yeah, and she she then used it to uh. <laughs> Just the thought of her having an extra one that's but like then she used it to become a mario boss oh yeah to turn into a turtle yeah and then hibiki punched it really hard hibiki punched a lot of stuff this episode except for in the end she was about to punch uh, vanessa but like held back at like two inches away from her like trying to yeah, like, reach like out one her punch hand man. again it's like when one punch man fought genos oh yes it was like she's saying i have defeated you you can't get away now like be friends yeah yeah it's like kibiki's not only trying to win the fight but also the friendship because winning a friendship means you win at life and hibiki definitely wins at friendship exactly do you remember who that quote was from not at all maka from kill a kill well there you go kill a kill x symphon gear Okay, now I want to like edit in the uh, Maka speeches into Sympho Gear. <laughs> no, put all the music from Kill a Kill into Sympho Gear. Or no, put the Sympho Gear music into Kill a Kill. It could go. It could go either way. Elements Garden like, this season are really good. Yeah, like just like the bat, like the music this episode with one of the big battles in Kill a Kill. <laughs> I want to do that now. It would be perfect. We have right, I'm to gonna go do that. Goodbye, everyone. No, no say. I don't know what you to can't, do. You can't tell me what to do. This is my podcast. <laughs> exactly why you should stay.
And that's the first time I've left her on my own podcast. Uh, this is true. This is very true. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, any other thoughts or opinions or uh, crazy theories about this episode? Uh, let's see. Hibiki eats, like, two whole sandwiches and, like, three bites. I thought it was five bites because I think I counted. It is a short amount of bites. <laughs> it is. Like, I know she's a main character of an action anime, but I don't think they eat that quickly normally. I think Goku eats way quicker. And that's the person you have to compare her to because she is... She uses she, martial arts. And she goes Super Saiyan. This is true. And she also like learns from Gurren Lagann and Jojo from time to time. I may have talked about this before, but every character has like another character from like another show that you can compare them to. Because like... Vicky has Goku. Um, oh god, what's the other one? Um, I don't know what Chelsea said before. Oh. I, I had it. I, I could, oh god. <laughs> well, it's like Subasa's like the samurai, like Kenshin or characters like that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was that was it. Yeah, it was like all the like Roroni Kenshin and. Uh, Chris would be Le- Revy from Black Lagoon. But with less profanity, normally. <laughs> that would be great if Karis starts cursing. I mean, she has some profanity. I think more more than average, but... I think there's, I mean, like... This... I think they've toyed around with profanity a lot in this show, but it was it's never consistent. Because they had it in, like, season two, I believe. Where, it's like, they were, my... like, saying shit and all that. Yeah, I think it's also, like, how the, how the people subtitling it, like, translate it. Because that, there's well... typically... Not profanity in the way we think of in Japanese. Yeah, that is that is true. In this episode, or not this episode, in the second episode or third? Oh no, yeah, second episode. Tsubasa said "bitch." So, I mean, those yeah, but was like was that actually what she said, or is that just how they translated it? I mean, I like to believe that's what she said. <laughs> and then you have Did the death all yelling death. Oh yeah, death is definitely profanity for sure. She didn't <laughs> yeah, yell but... death when she was in the labyrinth thing, the noble phantasm. Exactly. And we were both ta- when we were watching together. We both commented on that. Yes, yeah. If she wanted to deal damage, she should have yelled death. Yes, exactly. If I ever get stuck by a labyrinth, I'll be sure to yell death when I try. <laughs> exactly. Just when you're trying to do something and you really want to succeed, yell death while doing I, it. I think my coworkers will look at me strange. <laughs> I mean, it, it couldn't be that bad. Okay, remind me to tell you the story about the uh, dying at my job. Oh, no. I don't want to share it on stream, though. Uh, <laughs> did we talk about Maria's boobs bursting through chains? We No, it was her sword with chains, too. Yeah, Maria, I did not know she had that much of like, a chain theme. I didn't know her boobs were that strong. <laughs> that, too. That's that's why she's the best. Besides Chris. And Hibiki, and the Death Lolly. And probably every one of these characters. <laughs> yeah, there are lots of good characters here. I like them all. Uh, I guess that wraps up this episode of the Symphony Gear podcast. Uh, I think C is broken. We'll uh, restart him after we put him in the freezer for about three minutes. <laughs> I think, yeah. I, I think that's it. Wait, I've, why do I have a typo in the description? Because descriptions. Okay, that's fixed now. Oh no. Wait. I fixed the internet, don't worry. Yeah, I don't have anything else to talk about. Okay, uh, so see, tell people where they can find you. I you can find me on YouTube. I have two channels. I have the Bento channel, and I have my main channel, the Sea Tactics channel, both of which I talk about anime on. Uh, and yeah. And, we, and during your outro, we have the most people watching that we've had all podcasts. So good timing. Thank you for watching, everyone. <laughs> oh, fine. Te- very terrible timing. Yes. And yes, yeah, so they can find you on the Sea Tactics, where you talk about shows with lots of explosions, and they can talk you. And they can find you on the Bento Channel, where we talk about Fruits Basket. Exactly. That's pretty much it. I talk about Fate on the main channel. JoJo, Hunter X Hunter, a bunch of you know nerdy stuff and then the second channel talk about a bunch of fruits baskets cute boys uh dumplings 
Yes, and we get off. And we sometimes talk about Sinful Gear on there while, while we talk about Fruits Basket. Sometimes. I feel like there's more people involved with the Fruits Basket podcast, but I realize it's just because so many people chat during the podcast. Yeah, so, yeah. So we, that's why we try to get all the Fruits Basket podcast people to come here, but then they just get confused. And hello, Catherine Merkel, or if I'm reading that right. Yeah, yes, I am. Catherine was here last week as well, and I think the week yes. before. Yes, thank you for coming back to watch, Catherine. Uh, so, yeah, uh, go check out C's channels. Uh, go check out C's Discord, where we have a Simple Gear chat where we post all kinds of cool screenshots. Mostly of Chris and Mario. Though I also post a lolly, so Garfield's happy. Oh, jeez. <laughs> all right, thank you for watching, everyone, and we will see you next week around the same time, hopefully, probably. Goodbye.